Good morning and happy Sabbath, church. Are you happy? Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. <laughs> yes, it sounds you're happy. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Praise God for the Sabbath. Uh, well, let's pray before we get into the studying of God's Word. Dear Father, I'm weak, but I know that you're strong. Cover me in the blood of Christ and speak to each one of us in Christ's name. Amen. Our subject today is entitled Extraterrestrial Life. What does extraterrestrial mean? It means out of planet Earth. So we're going to discover today, is there life outside planet Earth? Is there life on Earth? Yes, we are all alive. Amen? And in my previous message two weeks ago, we looked at the topic, a trip to outer space. And we saw from the word of God, God through Jeremiah said long ago, the, as the host of heaven cannot be numbered, and as the sand of the seas that cannot be measured. And we saw the number of worlds, planets and stars. There are so many impossible for us to count. We thank God for technology. His word said in Daniel 12, 4, at the end of times, knowledge shall increase. And Hubble Space Telescope and James Webb's telescope, they started to explore the heavens and send us unbelievable pictures of the vastness of the universe. They're still probing. And these are galaxies, distant galaxies. And the scientists are marveling because they all believe there were just a few thousand stars in the sky not long ago, as I presented last couple of weeks ago. And we also saw how many stars and planets are there in the Milky Way galaxy. That's our home galaxy. The Milky Way is estimated to contain 100 to 400 billion stars, more than 100 billion planets. We saw this last couple of weeks back. That's our nearest galaxy, Andromeda Galaxy, and how far is it from Milky Way? 2.5 million light years away. Wow, that's our neighbor. And how many galaxies are there in the visible universe? This, because man is still discovering. So what we can see, the Guardian newspaper, 2016, said the universe has two trillion galaxies, astronomers say. Two trillion galaxies. How many stars in the visible universe? We, oh, we saw 400 billion stars in our galaxy, and there are two trillion galaxies, and that's the total number of stars. Eight and 23 zeros. 24 zeros is septillion number of stars. What about planets in the visible universe? We did that, that, did that calculation last time. Wow, that's the number. Number of planets. But today we are exploring the other part. Is there life in outer space? And our sources will be three. Astronomical science, the Holy Bible, and the spirit of prophecy. Are you ready? Amen? Amen? What do scientists say about life in other worlds? This is the Time magazine of July 27, 2016. The cover page. The search for life in the universe. Is anybody out there? Science is finding new clues. 20, uh, September 25, 2018, a scientific journal, NASA is taking a new look at searching for life beyond Earth. 
Dr. Late Dr. M. R. Bakes, the principal investigator for SETI. SETI stands for Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. And she says, you have the chemical foundation spread throughout the entire galaxy. We are not special, I would bet. If I had a million dollars, I would bet that life is widespread across the universe. The Guardian, the British newspaper, June 6, 20, uh, 2007, intelligent extraterrestrials almost certainly exist on distant planets beyond our solar system, leading British astronomers told the government. They almost certainly exist because they can't see it. It's too far and they'll never be able to see it. But I thank God the prophets saw. They were taken there in vision. This can't, it's too far beyond. But they are certain they do exist. Sir James Jeans from the UK, a leading astronomer. And I want to quote from today's amazing universe by Philip Knox in page 75. There must be myriads of worlds capable of supporting life as we know life here. The Washington Post, July 21, 2015, scientists believe there are, there's other life in the universe. Why haven't we found it yet? Smith, uh, Smithsonian, September, that's uh, a scientific and technological journal. September 9, 2022, scientists discover a planet with the potential to support life. Uh, University of Chicago News, scientists debate likelihood of finding life on other planets by 2042. Oh, that's going to be a bit too late. <laughs> Jesus might come before that. Washington Post, uh, June 19, 2021, intelligent life probably exists on distant planets even if we don't make contact, astrophysicists say. They can't make contact because this earth is the only planet that has fallen in sin and they can't make contact with the other worlds. The only ones that come from outside space, outside earth are angels. Remember Jacob's ladder that represents Jesus and who were ascending and descending? The angels. Nobody from other planets would come. In verse that's the scientific journal, Santa's Pinpoint, October 20, 30, 2020. Santa's uh, Pinpoint, how many planets in the Milky Way could host life? They're trying to pinpoint now. And they say the Milky Way consists at least 100 billion planets. A new study estimates that a mere 300 million of those 100 billion planets may have the right ingredients for life. 300 million. A proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences of the United States of America, November 5, 2013. Study says 40 billion planets in our galaxy could support life. In our galaxy, there are two trillion galaxies. 40 billion could. The Daily Express, the UK uh, newspaper, February 22, 2016, aliens could be living on 700 quintillion planets in the universe. Wow, what's that number? And that's the number. Oh, it's tough to count even the zeros there. I think there are 20 zeros, seven and 20 zeros. Scientists are believing life is possible. Evidence is there. Now we'll probe to the more authentic source than science. Of course, they are coming closer, but they will never be able to see, but they have evidence. 
what does the spirit of prophecy say about life in other worlds? Sister White was given visions, more than 2,000 visions. And some of the visions has to, had to do with astronomical science and planets and life in outer space. She writes in the Watchman, April 23, 1907, paragraph 8, God has worlds upon worlds that are obedient to his law. Only one world disobeyed, and you and I are part of that world. But the rest are obedient to his law. How many? Worlds upon worlds. And then she describes that our earth is so small compared to the universe and the other worlds. She writes in Rivian Herald, March 9, 1886, how grateful we should be that notwithstanding this earth is so small amid the created worlds, God notices even us. The nations are before him as a drop in the bucket and as a small dust in the balance. Wow. God notices us in this small world. He's noticing you and me. Elsewhere, she writes, God looks at you as if you're the only person existing in the entire universe. His attention is full. His attention is complete. So never entertain the thought that the devil puts sometimes that God has forgotten you, that God doesn't care. You're so precious that he would send his son even if, they were, if you were the only one, if I were the only one. He notices us. This earth is just a drop in the bucket. And Raven March 1, 1881, God is not dependent on man for honor. He could marshal the starry hosts of heaven, the millions of worlds above. Well, she's trying to put some kind of figure for us to understand. Millions of worlds above to raise a song of honor and praise and glory to his name. He's not, he doesn't need us, beloved but he desires for us. That's his love. And again, Testimonies to Ministers, page 324, this world is but a little atom in the vast domain over which God presides. Little atom. And how little is an atom? Again, Rivian Herald, September 29, 1881. Every eye in the unfallen universe, they are unfallen, only we have fallen. Every eye in the unfallen universe is bent upon those who profess to be Christ followers. So you know what? Right now, not just God is watching, angels are watching. Every eye in the trillions and trillions of planets are focused on you and me. Not to find fault with this. They love us too. Amen? They're just hoping that we would make it. Here in this atom of a world, an earnest warfare is going on. This is the only place where the warfare is going on. The devil and his angels are here. But thank God we don't need to be scared because if God be for us, who can be against us? Amen? amen. Tell aloud, amen. amen. Greater is he that is in you than the one in the world. So don't fear that roaring lion. Yes, he's roaring. He's mad. He knows he has but a short time and he's wrath. But if God be for us, who can be against us? Angels that excel in strength. If the devil and his angels are one third, we have two thirds on our side. And the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit on our side. Fear not. Fear not. 
and she says unfallen universe and she tells it uh, tells that our world is just an atom of a world atom <laughs> how small is an atom well let me try to illustrate how small is an apple compared to this this earth is the apple big or small so an atom basically is uh, how many apples could you fit on the surface surface of this earth well i tried to do some calculations 2.5 septillion apples could fit this volume of this earth and how much is that Woo. that many apples could fit so an atom is 2.7 septillion okay 2.7 septillion atoms uh, sorry apples can fill this earth so there are 2.5 septillion small little atoms in an apple did you get it if you didn't get it even i didn't get it <laughs> let's try again 2.5 septillion that's the number there you can see so many little dots can fit into an apple and that one dot is an atom is that clear so earth is like that not even a dot not even a dot in the vast universe of god how many planets are there in the visible universe we saw that we did that calculation a little while ago so many planets in the visible universe from science and ellen white talks about earth being an atom in the vast universe of god and in fact if you compare it i found that very interesting it's almost same what the scientists are saying the number of worlds when you compare her language of atoms unbelievable and then we know one man the first man to be taken from planet earth in the old testament enoch the seventh from adam he was taken to heaven and ellen white in a vision saw saw ina in early writing page 40 she writes then i was taken to a world which had seven moons there i saw good old enak who had been translated i asked him if this was the place where he had been taken from the earth he said it is not the city is my home and i have come to visit this place He moved about the place as if perfectly at home. What was he not what seen up doing his go his own visit? Where are the planets? He has come to visit he said. And we are told Ellen White you know in vision she was visiting the place and she wanted to be there and, and the angel said no 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 you are only in a vision go back. You will come later. if you are faithful you with the 144000 shall have the privilege of visiting how many worlds wait a minute how many worlds are there i, I can't put a number 2 trillion galaxies 2.5 septillion worlds and if you're going to take one day to visit one year you know how long you'll take to complete all the worlds almost eternity but don't forget you'll be visiting only for 6 days 7th day you'll ba- be back in the city isaiah says from one sabbath to another all flesh shall come to worship before me so you have to come back home but you have 6 days to travel right and eternity unbelievable you know what we are going to do there we're going to explore they are intelligent unfallen everything is going to be different in each world and they have been studying the creative activity of god and they will exp- explain to us the science behind it because they are exploring and then you think we'll have a story to tell them they'll tell the creation story how how great thou art and we'll be saying amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me i once was lost but now i'm found was blind but now i see they will want to hear your testimony so be ready with to share your testimony 
to the trillions and trillions and trillions of worlds. They'll be all excited. I don't think one day is enough to visit one planet. Can you do a world tour in one day on Earth? Wow. We have enough time. Thank God for eternity. Amen. Amen. And then she writes, The Lord has given me a view of other worlds. Wings were given me, and an angel extended me from the city to a place that was bright and glorious. The grass of the place was living green, and the birds, uh, there wobbled a sweet song. The inhabitants of the place were of all sizes. They were noble, majestic, and lovely. They bore the express image of Jesus, and their countenance beamed with holy joy, expressive of the freedom and happiness of the place. I asked one of them why they were so much more lovely than those on earth. The reply was, we have lived in strict obedience to the commandments of God and have not fallen by disobedience like those on earth. I saw two trees. One looked like the tree of life in the city. The fruit of both looked beautiful, but one they could not eat. They had power to eat both, but were forbidden to eat one. Then my attending angel said to me, None in this place have tasted of the forbidden tree, but if they should eat, they would fall. Beloved, this test of the two trees, the tree of life and tree of knowledge, was not just for people on planet Earth, for Adam and Eve. It was for all the trillions of worlds. Because Satan started this great controversy in heaven, and he was roaming around trying to get people on his side. But only one couple fell a trap to him. And we are the children of that couple. Thank God, God didn't give up. He could have simply blown this atom. What is an atom? No. His love is amazing. Now, what does the Bible say about life in the other worlds? Let's explore from the Word of God. The famous text of John 3.16, Jesus himself said, For God so loved the world, which will this earth, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You know, I just told you, this is only an atom of a world. Why, Lord, why? To redeem us, to create this world, it took six days. But to redeem, it's 6,000 years. And Christ's suffering did not begin at Gethsemane and end at Calvary. He's the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. He's still bleeding. John saw in John chapter Revelation 5, a lamb as it had been slain. He's still suffering. God's love. Why? There was no other way to save us. We had to pay the penalty or die because the law of God is unchangeable. It's his character that cannot be changed. The only way out was to sacrifice his own son, the second person of the Trinity, so that you and I will have an opportunity, a second chance, to make it to glory. I can't understand this love. I can't understand. God so loved the world. And in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 2, it's talking about Jesus. He made the world. So does the Bible talk about just one world? Worlds, plural. And again in Hebrews eleven three, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. The worlds. He spake and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. He also spoke the angels into existence. He spoke everything into existence by his word. But when, here also he spoke in six days, but when it came to make man in his own image, after his own likeness, he didn't speak. He got down. With his own hands, he fashioned him. 
You know what we are? Ellen White says, new and distinct race. Not there anywhere in the universe. In the trillions of worlds. The closest to God Almighty. And Satan wanted us. And God said, I'll get them back. He made the worlds. Now we know from astronomical science, how many worlds are there? In Isaiah, the scripture reading, read to us beautifully by Sister Rhoda, Isaiah 60, 50, 45, 18. For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, cosmos, the worlds, God himself that formed the earth and made it, he established it not in vain, he established it, he created it not in vain, he formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord and there is none else. He's talking about earth and talking about the heavens, the universe. He says he created the heavens. He created it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. Just like on planet earth. They are inhabited with unfallen beings. big universe of God. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 4, 9, we have been made a spectacle to the whole universe, to angels as well as to human beings. Where do human beings live on earth? Where do angels live? In heaven. So they are watching and also the whole universe, the worlds are watching us. So is there life for them to watch us? Yes, they're watching. And that's why Sister White says, every eye in the unfallen universe is bent upon those who profess to be Christ followers. Every eye, they're watching. In the book of Job, God comes to Job. As Job went through that suffering, his friends were giving him, you know, his, their own advice. And then Job had so many questions. He was not sure. God comes with, what, 77 questions to Job. Talks to him about creation and many things. And then he says, where was thou, Job, when I laid the foundations of the earth? Were you there? When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of joy, uh, sons of God shouted for joy. Where were you? When I created, you know what, there was great rejoicing. Among two groups of people, the morning stars, they sang, all the sons of God shouted and said, hooray, hallelujah, when God made man in his own image. Who are the morning stars? Who are stars? And oh, who are the sons of God? The Bible tells us stars are the angels, Revelation 1.20. Uh, remember when Jesus was born, there was a star leading them, the wise men. And then the Bible tells us the shepherds, angels were there singing to them. They were the same stars. They appeared like stars to the pagans, heathens, and appeared as they are as angels. Stars are angels. And where do angels live? Angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. They are all there, angels. So the stars are in heaven. That's why it says Lucifer drew one third of the stars from heaven, remember? And then it says angels. And who are all the sons of God? The angels are in heaven, and where are these from, sons of God? In Job chapter 1, it says, Now there was a day when the sons of God, this is the other group, came together to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan also came among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth and walking up and down in it. So the sons of God, they came to present themselves before the Lord. From where did they come? They were not, yes, they were not living in heaven. They're not living in heaven as angels do. This came for a meeting. So, and somebody else came, an uninvited guest. Satan also came from where? Earth. The earth. So the sons of God came from the other planets, and this one came from this planet. 
for that heavenly meeting. And in chapter 2, you have the same thing, another meeting, and Satan appears again, the same dialogue. You know, Satan and his angels were cast out of heaven, the Bible says, Revelation 12, 7 and 8. The dragon uh, fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was there place found anymore in heaven. No entry after they were kicked out. The probation was closed. No entry after that. Then how did, you know, it appears that Satan was in heaven for that meeting. No, 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 no. Ellen White says in the story of redemption, page 27, as he could not gain admission within the gates of heaven, he would wait just at the entrance to taunt the angels and seek contention with them as they went in and out. He can still fly, but he cannot enter. No more place. So he knew when the meetings happened because he was there in Job chapter 1 meeting, Job chapter 2 meeting. Not inside, outside the gate. And, uh, you know, God knew he was there. Angels would have told, you know, someone has come from planet Earth. <laughs> and God said, where did you come? He said, from Earth. You called all the sons of God, but, you know, I should be here too. Beloved, Satan, he was an angel in heaven, the highest. He knows exactly that God is a God of order. He's perfect in his timing. He knows when these meetings take place because he was there. So he would show up every time there was a meeting. He would run there at the gate and yell and scream. Now, when God created Adam and Eve, the Bible tells about Adam, the one whom he created first. Adam, which was the son of God. The first man on planet Earth, the head of the human race, had the title Son of God. And when God made man, he said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion upon the earth. So Adam, along with his wife Eve, they were given charge of planet Earth. And Adam, the head of that family, was the king of this planet to have dominion over this planet. So the sons of God have dominion over their respective planets. But when Satan overcame our first parents, that dominion was passed on. They sold it to the devil. And that's why the devil has the title now, the prince of this world. Remember in that wilderness temptation, he came to Jesus. He showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And he said, that has been delivered unto me by Adam. So as the prince of this world, he went there and he said, well, <laughs> other prince of other worlds have come. I should also go. But thank God, the real son of God. Adam was the created son of God. The other world's uh, you know, heads are the created sons of God. But Jesus is the uncreated son of God. In him is life original, unborrowed, underived. Amen? Amen? The real son of God. The only begotten son of God. Decided to rescue humanity. And Jesus took the controversy head on. You know, forever we should be grateful to Jesus. Amen. Worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive honor and glory and power and majesty and strength. We could never understand what he did. That the risk of his own life, he came. And Jesus won the battle on the cross, the serpent head was stamped. And talking about Calvary, Jesus said in John 12, 31, Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this earth, of this world, be cast out. He was a prince till now from Adam's fall 
till Calvary. He would run up and down to the heavenly meetings as a prince of this world. But Jesus at Calvary cast him out as the prince. The prince of peace prevailed. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 It is finished. You know, the disciples were saying, oh, yo, we thought he was son of God. It's over. <laughs> but Sister White tells us that the angels and the unfallen worlds, they triumphed and sang hallelujah, glory, glory, glory. It is finished. Mankind can be saved. This planet Earth can be restored. It is finished. Wow. The prince of this world is cast out. Post-Calvary onwards, devil cannot even go close by to the gates. He's confined. Somebody else represents us in those heavenly meetings. Who is that? Jesus. Jesus. The best, the greatest of all the sons of God. And Jesus came and spake unto them after his resurrection. All power is given unto me in heaven and on earth. I'm in charge. I won. It's given unto me. Because of his precious blood, our world is in safe hands. Yes, the controversy is go going on. The devil is still around, but he has promised to come back, Jesus, and put an end to this nonsense that has been going on for 6,000 years. And Jesus represents humanity in the heavenly council. Wow. The real son of God. The created son of God failed at one tree. The uncreated son of God prevailed on another tree, Calvary. Amen. Amen. Wow. Sons of God are hairs. As we conclude, this is the best of it. Jesus, the true Son of God. Adam was just, only the head of the human race is called the Son of God. But he failed and real Son of God came and then he dishes out and offer to everyone. John 1, 12. But as many as received him, Jesus, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even unto them that believe on his name. What do you have to do? Believe. Whosoever believeth in him shall not perish. Believe. And what does it say? He gave power to become sons of God. It's not just a title. There is power attached to that. There is power. What kind of power? And not just to one person. Adam was the only one originally who had the title son of God. To now as many whosoever believeth. You will have the power to become the sons of God. Wow. Romans 8, 14 to 17. The sons of God have received the spirit of adoption. We are adopted now as sons of God. Whereby we cry, Abba, Father. And if children, are we children? Yes. Then, hairs. Hairs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so that we suffer with him, we may also be glorified together. That's interesting. We suffer with him. That means he's still suffering. As we suffer, he's still suffering. That's why I said he's a lamb that John saw that was bleeding. He's still suffering. When you are afflicted, he is afflicted. When you have lost your loved one and feel that pain, He's feeling that pain. He's suffering with you. That we might be glorified together. Look at this. Sons of God, we are taken, adopted into his family. And then we are heirs of who? 
of God. What? And joint heirs with Christ. I don't know whether you got it. Let's try to explore. We'll be glorified together. When he comes, the glory starts actually. What is hair? Who is a hair? The Oxford Dictionary tells us a person legally entitled to the property or rank of another. Legally entitled to the property and rank of someone else on the person's death. Of course, after he died legally and then he rose again. Property, what is his property? <laughs> Think about your own property. I don't know how much you have. I don't have anything anyway. <laughs> That's the property. His son, whom he appointed heir of all things. And that's why Jesus could say, all that the Father hath are mine. He's entitled to the Father's property and rank because he's here. And we are what? Wow, what? So if Jesus could say, all that the Father hath are mine, do you and I can rightfully say, all that the Father hath? are mine in Christ. Amen. Property and rank. And that's why he said, to him that overcometh, will I grant to sit with me on my throne, even as I am overcome and sat down with my father in his throne. His joint hairs with, with the father. He's the heir of the Father, and we are joint heirs with him. You know, angels are not heirs. The cre unfallen created universe are not heirs. Only to one race, the human race, because he, the uncreated Son of God, came as Emmanuel, God with us. We did him no favor. We only insulted him, abused him, and crucified him. But he said, Father, forgive them. Anyone now who believes, come on, let's sign the contract. With his own blood he signed, and he said, they will be joint heirs. I give them power to become sons of God. As many. And that's why we'll be sitting on the throne of the universe where angels cannot step up. You and I will rightfully step up, sitting on the throne. What are we going to do on the throne? We shall reign with him. Woo! Reign over what? His property. They shall reign for how long? Forever and ever. And so you and I will be going to visit other planets like Enoch has already started. And you're going not as a visitor, heir of the kingdom, ruler and owner of the property of God. Like Prince William, heir to the British throne, you and I are heirs of another throne Property beyond imagination. So how rich are you? <laughs> I just have a few, a few dollars only in Sandy Spring Bank. But whether you're a millionaire or a billionaire, whether you're Elon Musk or Bill Gates, that is nothing. I'm rich. My property? Ha, I can't let the scientists count. 
His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler, ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Ruler of the universe. Join us with Christ. So when you go through life, don't put your head down. Walk up. Chin up. Don't go with a sad face. Rejoice in the Lord always. Let not the devil lie to you that you're worthless. If you think you're a great sinner, Jesus is a greater savior. Trust him. Give your heart to him. If the devil says financially, no, you can't do that. Say, listen, I have an account that you know not of. I've laid up my treasures in heaven. And the devil was in heaven. He was kicked out. He's not happy. You're not just going to replace the angels. You're going to be hares sitting on the throne. Wow. That's my property, beloved. (laughs) That's yours as well. We are joint hares. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom and the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Now we might cry. We are going through pain. Might be going through tests and trials. Yes, we are all suffering, but don't forget he's suffering with us. You're not alone. He's your companion. But one day very soon, As Paul said, for I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Don't complain about anything. Just praise the Lord. Count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it'll surprise you what the the Lord has done. Nothing wrong in pouring out your feelings to God. He understands. Nothing wrong in pouring out feelings to one another. We understand. We carry one another's burdens. But let not that continually be a fountain. As Pastor John beautifully preached, I remember, we need to move from that phase to the next phase. Not worthy, not worthy. Sister White envisioned, she saw we, we are entering and we are pushing the pearly gates and entering and we say, heaven is cheap enough. It's my father's house. It's, you know, if you go to White House or Buckingham Palace, you have to be very scared. <laughs> you know, what you do, how you do, how you walk, what you say, what you don't say. But here we feel so much at home. And angels will look at you. We'll be like wanting to meet our our angels and say, wow, Gabriel. Gabriel will look at you and say, wow. (laughs) You know who is greater? Because of Jesus. Because of Jesus. We'll read this text together. We may not understand this text at all. But let's read together. Behold... What manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. You know the power attached to that title, Son of God? What manner of love. God so loved the world that he gave his Son and now he lavishes unbelievable love and riches. He says, come on, joint hairs. Share my throne, share my property forever. We'll be traveling to the trillion septillions and I, I don't know actually what other name to call it. The worlds, they are waiting for you and me to come. Wow. What did it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Oh dear. Sometimes we just forget that there is a heaven to gain. We think this earth is everything. And we sacrifice principles. We disregard the law of God. We go to school on Sabbath. 
We go to work on Sabbath. We run our businesses on Sabbath. And then we think if we put an extra offering, God will be happy with it and the church will be benefited. No. God does not need yours. He needs you. The silver and gold is his. So, beloved, obedience is better than sacrifice. Don't try to get an education sacrificing divine principles. You are selling your soul to the devil. Don't try to run your business on Sabbath or do anything that is not permitted in God's word. You'll be selling your soul to the devil. What doth it profit a man if he gains the whole world? Nobody has gained the whole world. Nebuchadnezzar did. He almost lost his soul. So don't try to make some extra bucks by sacrificing divine principles. Many will realize too late that they've made a mistake. And those riches and that education that you have received will condemn your soul. What doth it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Jesus said, He that overcometh shall inherit all things. And I will be his God and he shall be my son. Sons of God shall inherit all things. The devil is a liar. As he appeared to Jesus in the temptation wilderness, bringing the glories of the kingdom before and telling us to compromise. Liar. Jesus says, I just don't have this earth to give you. I have all my property to give you. I've signed it with my own blood. As for me and my family, Joshua said, we will serve the Lord. Shall we all repeat that? As for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. And finally, you know, the meetings are going on, the heavenly meetings. God has it scheduled in his calendar right now. It's all up there. But after a thousand years, Jerusalem will come down to planet Earth. Amen. And you know where those meetings are going to be held henceforth for eternity? On planet Earth. The sons of God from the millions and billions of worlds are going to come to planet Earth for heavenly meeting. You think Satan is going to come as well? He'll be gone forever. Sinners will be gone. No more accuser. I thank God. This is the only planet that is lost in sin. But God so loved the world. The lonely planet will be a lovely planet. The loveliest of all. That's about extraterrestrial life. So do you think there is life in outer space? Yes. yes. Are you planning to visit the worlds? Yes. Hair of the kingdom, why dost thou slumber? Let us awake to who we are. And praise the Lord for who we are in Jesus. Amen. Amen. After that inspiring message, let's turn to hymn number 594, 594, Hair of the King. We'll sing the first, second, and fifth stanzas.
for your lavish love upon us. O Lord, we cannot understand it. For eternity, we'll experience it and get to know what it means. The Father has loved us so much that we are called the sons of God. And we have that power, that title, that authority. Oh Lord, thank you, thank you. We are not alone. You are with us. And we thank you that we have friends innumerable in the other worlds. They are waiting for our visit. Help us by your grace to awake unto righteousness and to be ready for the soon coming of Christ, to go home to heaven to our Father's house and then visit the world's unnumbered. Thank you for that hope. Thank you for your love. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Happy Sabbath and thank you so much for joining us here at the Remnant Seventh-day Adventist Church for our divine service. What a beautiful message it has been. Extraterrestrial life. Wow. It's my hope and prayer that you've been blessed by the ministry rendered here from this pulpit, the special music and the sermon today rendered by our very own associate pastor, Pastor Michael Pedrin. How many worlds are out there? How many created beings are out there? And yet, despite it all, we are promised to be heirs of God. Join heirs with Jesus. That the gift that the throne that Jesus sits on is promised for us as well. Brothers and sisters, we have to turn our eyes to Jesus. What incredible promises. You know, I'm even still digesting it and trying to wrap my mind around the whole sermon right now. What an incredible, incredible thing to think about. There's so much out there. Let us purpose to make it there, to heaven, to be with Jesus for eternity, and to travel together to the universe. Wow. I hope that you've been blessed by the sermon, by the music, by everything here at the Remnant Seventh-day Adventist Church. Be sure and remember that we have been blessed by your presence here. You know, we're a family, and I'm very grateful that each one of you have chosen to worship with us today. I want to ask you that you Continue to pray for us here at the church that we can continue to grow and develop our media ministries to reach and spread the Three Angels message to every part of the world. Additionally, I humbly request that you partner with us in your financial contributions or in help in any way that you can help us in doing this mission for which we are commissioned to do together. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace, dismissing you with his blessing, but never from his presence. Join us back here at 5 p.m. for our praise and prayer service. Until then, have a wonderful Sabbath. Oh, and I have some friends to say happy Sabbath and goodbye. Come on in, guys. Come on in. Ready? Say, Come on in a little further, a little further. Say happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Take care. I'll see you soon.